So I'm going to teach uh, member functions and privacy, uh, but as I'm teaching it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and, and excuse, excuse, squeeze some dynamic memory allocation in it. The problem is that, uh, again, if you kind of have, if you went through DMA before coming here, then you're good. But not understand it, just get an idea, then it's gonna be enforced. But if you don't review the, the, the things that I teach last time, you come over here, while I'm doing privacy, you wanna say, what the heck is that new over there? And that's gonna ruin everything. So please review before you come to class. Uh, I'm not asking you to master it. Just take a look at it and see what's going on, okay? All right. Let the games begin. So I'm gonna bring up to see what we have. So your, your quiz is gonna be on Friday, you know that. Uh, I already put it on the um, uh, team's announcement, so you know that. And don't get used to it. It's not going to stay like this all the time. Oh, gosh, it needs the token. All right. To log in. Ooh, I just broke it. Anyways, give me a second. was that? <laughs> so, so my brother checking over here. <laughs> All right. Things that you hear. Anyways, it's, it got stuck. Doing that. Anyways, uh, So we talked about dynamic memory allocation, types and references and everything. Any questions about that? Any questions of any kind that you want to ask before we start member functions? Yes. In worst case situation, like this scenario, so which case we use dynamic memory allocation? When you don't know what the number of data is when you are programming. That's the, the only answer. So when you are coding and you want to get the data, you don't know how many. If you know exactly how many, uh, yeah, if it's ginormous, sure. Dynamic memory allocation happens in two, uh, two ways. Either uh, you don't know how, many, how much data you have, or the data is too big to be in your executable. That's it in those, these two cases. If you know exactly how many, how many of your, how many elements or how much data you have, and you can create an array to exactly hold that much, who cares, right? So. And dynamic memory allocation, so you're going to say, uh, what's the problem? Like, yeah, like, I can put 20 characters for a name, and if somebody's name is five characters, who cares if it's 15 bytes? Like, my computer has four gigs of RAM, who cares, right? Now, my computer has 32 gigs of RAM. Who cares about that 15 bytes? The problem is that um, that accumulates. So if, you, if it's only one name, of course don't do dynamic memory allocation. Just when you one name and show it. But if supposed to, you're supposed to create a name and you keep creating the name and keep them in memory and it's gonna be the name of people in Canada, then 15 bytes multiplied by 35 million, that's a humongous amount of data. So that's when dynamic memory allocation comes in play. That's why when you are di doing dynamic memory allocation, the function that does dynamic memory allocation assumes what is the biggest size of data coming in and creates an array with that size. Then it receives the data in that temporary memory, then dynamically allocates exactly to how much it's got and returns that one. And the automatic variable that is inside is going to just vanish. 
So which one do you like? Do you like the heat or the noise? <laughs> oh, heat, okay. Yeah, the, the other class, the teacher is very excited. <laughs> I thought the students are talking, but no. I admire that. <laughs> OK. So let's see what we're going to do. Just updating everything over here, make sure everything's perfect. <clears throat> so Just making things ready. So let's say, <coughs> let's say I want to. Um, just trying to come up with a, <coughs> a nice example so it doesn't overwhelm us too much. So first I'm going to go with the easy example, then I'm going to actually talk about it and see how we're going to deal with it. So. I was just telling to the other class that um, when I speak, please don't speak because I get easily distracted. And now I cannot say to the gentleman over there, don't talk on your phone in the corridor. All right. So let's say I want to keep track of containers that are coming to, an, to, a, to a warehouse. And these containers are supposed to um, hold different type of materials um, in liters. So we have a container that holds, I don't know, olive oil in 220 liters, holds water for this much and that much. And I want to have this containers set up and see how things work out. So if I want to do that, to create something like that, I Obviously, from IPC 144, I am going to create a structure for it, right? So I'm going to call it a struct. And in that structure, I'm going to call it a container. And that container of mine will have the specifications that I need. First, I need to know what I have in that container. So that's going to be the type of material that I have in there. Still, I'm not going to make it dynamic. I'm going to first go to privacy. Member functions and privacy first, then we're going to dig into all those things. So I need to know what is the volume of what I have in here, right? So how much stuff I have? Yes. Really? OK. Thank you. See, I'm bringing all those stuff I should bring with myself, one of those portable air conditioners, you know, <laughs> to cool down the class, too, because, um, yeah. But it wasn't like this. I don't know what happened. I pay, um, probably I should send an email or something to someone and ask why it's so humid in. Pardon me? Uh, yes, I think it's recording. Is it recording? Yeah. So if, it, again, if, if you, now it's recording. 
So how much do I have in this thing, in this container? And uh, what else I need to know about a container? So how much, uh, so this is a container, right? Let's say shape of it is not important for me, okay? So don't tell me it's not this like a bottle like and the other one is like a square type of thing, jar of pickles, we don't care. Uh, so what are the specifications of this as a thing? Volume is the amount of water inside that is very little, probably, uh, I don't know, 0 .0 0 0.0.002 liters, but um, what else? Hmm? Pack up is the content, right? What is the content? Good. So that's the next thing. Uh, what type of a variable is good for that? Character. Character, like you want to call it A, B, like. What type of, just character? Ah, thank you. So it's a C string. So let's, let's, be, let's be specific. It's, it's going to be a C string. And don't say a string. It's a C string. Remember that. reason I'm telling you to say C string, because when you go to 3, 4, 5, I want you to distinguish what is the difference between a string and C string. This semester, we only do C strings. No strings. What is a string? String is a class that is in C++ and takes care of strings, but C string is the good old fashioned null terminated character array, okay? So it's a C string. And how big a name of a, uh, how big could be the, the name of the content of the thing? We don't know. Wow, 200, okay. 256 it is. All right, I'm not gonna debate this. So what is the next thing? What else do we need to know about a container that is important? No. The size, yeah. What is the maximum amount that I can have? What is the size? So volume and, do I call it size? Size is good, in liters, right? Or, or what do you call it, like, what do you call it? Volume is, what do you, so volume is actually this. So volume is the size, and the other one, what should I call it? And the other one is amount, amount? What did you say? Nutrition. Nutrition? <laughs> yeah, that was one of the workshops I created, actually. Probably I'll give you that one this time. Anyway, so amount, yeah, sure. That's one of the things that I always point out doing these debates. You can actually feel that what I say is really true when, when I say when you're really programming. Really programming, not doing a workshop, like you're designing something by yourself. Approximately like 40% of the time you're programming, 60% you're saying, what should I name that variable? And that's very important actually. Don't just put something garbage because that's later on. As, I, as you see, I put over there volume and if two weeks later I would have come over there, I would have thought that volume is actually the size <laughs> and it would uh, fiddle with my brain too, which is, which is a bad thing. So, so that's what we have. So now, uh, I have this container and, I'll, and uh, I want to put information in this container, okay? So I want to create an array of containers and, and fill the values of the container and put something in it, right? So what do I need to do? I need to get information from the, from the user. So um, um, I'm gonna introduce you to a new function over here, so we're not gonna put use stdio anymore. Uh, how to get strings, C strings, from entry without, uh, with uh, including spaces. Uh, how do we do that? We're gonna see it today. So uh, if I want to display a container, I'm gonna say void display, right? So I display a container and I'm gonna pass over here a container reference and I'll call it C. Definitely because it's displayed, I don't wanna change it. I'm gonna put a const over here. I don't wanna change it. And that's gonna display a container and in here, I'm going to say C out uh, uh, container of, or I'm going to say, just going to put the name, M content. Okay, M content. Oh, sorry, C dot is content. C dot M content. And, and in here, I'm going to say, uh, what do I say? I'm going to put a space and I'm going to, or a comma, and I'm going to say, uh, amount C 
C dot amount and a slash out of whatever volume, right? And volume, and in here I'm gonna say liters. And I'm not gonna go to new line because uh, uh, I don't want to, <laughs> because display doesn't say go to new line. Uh, this, this is important about functions that you're writing. If your function and its name indicates that you are going to new line, go to new line. Other than that, this is displaying a container. It's not supposed to go to new line unless you want it to go to new line, okay? So you have to have a new line uh, printed afterwards. Well, we talked about references, so we understand what references are. What is C out? C out is made up of, uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so that's that, so it's displaying. Now I want to actually read the information for the container and put information in it. So I'm gonna say void read, it's gonna read a container. So container, reference C, and I'm gonna get the value from the, from the entry. So in here I'm gonna say C out. I'm going to say C out, and in this C out, I'm going to say uh, content, right? Whatever it is. And now I have to say C in into C dot M content, right? Don't want to because they won't say like oh, it's something like orange space juice. If they are doing something like that, the space is going to get stopped the reading. For that, uh, I'm going to add that. So for now, in here, I'm gonna say M content. So I'm gonna just put something like water and milk, but later on we'll fix this. So that's gonna get the content over there. And then after that, I'm gonna say C out. Uh, uh, container volume, container. Still, I, I, I have, uh, is volume size really? When you say container volume, that becomes size? Okay, everybody's doing like that, sure. And English is like fourth language for me, so <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> so C in, so C dot M volume, and I'm gonna say C out, uh, C out, C dot M content. Uh, amount. So if it's water, it's gonna say water amount. So it's gonna tell us what is the amount and I'm gonna go C in C dot um, amount and I'm gonna get the amount. So now I can actually create a container. Uh, container uh, CNT. Now in here I can say uh, read CNT and I can say display CNT, okay? Writing C in C++ type of a thing, right? If I run the program, obviously we know how it works. There is no uh, problem with, with what we are doing in here, so we can actually set that. So the program runs and what we see at execution is that first a container is created and obviously I have garbage for its values, amount, volume, everything is garbage over there, right? <clears throat> then it's gonna start reading it, so it comes over here, prints content, then it's gonna get the content, and I'm gonna say over here, milk, okay? <clears throat> now it's gonna say container volume, so it's gonna ask me what is the volume of the thing, and let's say 20 liters. It's gonna see in, and it's gonna I'm gonna put over here 20 liters, so that's 20 liters it's gonna get. Then it's gonna tell me what is the milk amount inside this thing. Now I'm gonna say 15 liters, oh gosh. Run it, and they say 15 liters, and hit enter. And as soon as I get out of here, because the C is actually set to those values, and C is a new name for CNT in here, when it comes back to main, my CNT will have the same values because it was a reference, it became a new name for it, and I say milk, 15 out of 20, 15 liters, oh, actually, that's a bad thing, that's 15, 20, it makes it 
uh, 15 twentieths of liters. That's wrong. So 15 liters. I have to say 15 liters in 20. So in here, I have to fix that. 15 liters in a, in 15 of 20 liters, right? 15 of 20 liters means 15 liters, right? Slash means a, uh, it's a friction, uh, friction, and I don't want that friction, and I, and I don't want to, the mistake. So 15, this much of that much. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, so that, I'm going to change it up. But anyway, so, so it worked. So now, now I have a container over here that is doing that. But we said that uh, encapsulation dictates that a container is supposed to be able to put the values of it in its own thing. I'm not supposed to change those values. I'm not supposed to have access to those values and do anything with that. So in C++, what we do, we actually move the information move the actions inside the container, teach the container how to do its own business. Instead of passing a container to a read function that has no owner, I'm going to tell to container, hey, container, read your information from console. And container will do it properly. OK? How do I do that? I bring these code inside the class. And because those, because those, so let me, Save this as so I'm gonna call it a non OO container. Hopefully you remember that is non object oriented container. <laughs> okay. Or you're gonna say what the heck that is, but that's even good because then you're gonna have an inquisitive what happened to my what happened? Okay. I think, did I just, okay, you see, I just wiped everything up and then I have to write it again. No, I have it here. All right, copy, paste, okay. So now what I need to do is to actually take these things and put inside the container, okay? I need to take these actions and put it inside the container. I could do that, but I don't want to. I want this to actually uh, be modularized later on. So I will learn that I'm going to tell what belongs to container and then implement it outside of the container. Putting the methods inside with their uh, code inside the class, those are called inline functions. They, are, they have special meaning. Let's not do that. If you don't have to, don't put the function inside the class. But instead, I'm going to say over here, uh, uh, container can display itself, and a container can read itself. Now, all the values you see over here are accessible to read and, and display. And instead of passing the container to it, I'm going to say this display belongs to container. Now I don't need to say C anymore. Because this display is the display that is defined inside the container, and it has access to all its properties. And I can do the exact same thing with the read. So in here, I can actually take this out. And I say, container read yourself. And I remove this C over here. What will be the difference? The difference is that. Now the container is created. I'm not passing it to anything. I'm going to say container, read yourself. And container, display yourself. Doing so, if I run the program, you will see that three years later when it compiles. Actually, I have to stop over here first. Many things are different. We used to be able to resize. Even that is not that is not set anymore. It doesn't resize both of them. So now, if I run the program, you know how it's going to run. It's going to actually ask. Um, um, so, my apologies. Q 
let me stop before running. I have to uh, walk through it. So uh, instead of doing that, I'm going to uh, uh, stop the program, control C, and rerun it, but uh, with F10. So now when it comes over here, still container has garbage in it, as you see. But when it actually reads, it goes inside the read that is in the guts of container. This read is within container because of what I've written in here. And it says the read of container. It's exactly like namespaces that you put scope resolution and you say C out that belongs to STD. This is the same thing over here. I'm going to say display that belongs to container will be called. So it's going to go to that function and read the information. I don't want to go step by step. I want to get out of the function, run, and then stop. That is step out. Step out in debugging is shift F11. So if I hold shift, press F11, it's going to run the whole function and then stop. Okay? So content, in here I'm going to say milk, and in here volume is uh, 20 liters, and milk amount is 15. So now it read everything. If I look at CNT, I'll see that CNT has all the value that I need, and display essentially uh, goes to the display and prints all those values. Milk, 15 of 20 liters is what we have. Okay? Are we okay with this? Okay. Now, having said that, all objects in C++ work the exact same way, which means the C in over here, it has many functions inside of it. This operator that you see that is overloaded for it and acts with it as if you are inserting into, extracting from C in and, and inserting it into the content, instead you can use a function. One of those functions is called getLine. Okay? What getLine is this, it does is this. So if you getLine reads a line and not one word, C in extracts one word and stops at names as stops at white space character, any type of white space. But get line goes right up to backslash n, reads up to backslash n, and stops. Not only that, you can actually tell how many to read. So I can say over here, dot get line, and in here, I'm going to say read up to what is uh, uh, the, not, the size of the thing is 256, right? So you actually write 256. It, it includes the null too. So you write, read up to 256 characters. Uh, um, and, oh, sorry, read into, sorry, read into uh, M uh, content up to 256 characters and stop. Okay? So if it goes below 256, it will stop, it will not terminate it, it will even flush the keyboard. It will throw away that, that new line. What happened? Is it locked? Can't come in? Oh, this one is. <laughs> All right. So we can go out. Good. <laughs> We're not going to be logged in. So, so what happens, again, when you say get line, C in will get everything in the line up to backslash n, and then puts it inside what you put over here as a C string and throws away that new line. So you don't need to worry about it. You don't have backslash zero at the end. Oh, where you have backslash zero at the end? You mean null termination? Yeah, yeah. That's why I called it C string. When I said get line reads a C string, it means it will do that zero schmiro thingy for it. Okay, it reads a C. I didn't say string, I said C string. It reads a C string and then puts it in there. Now, if it reaches to this one, remember I told you how C in is? Remember that? I said C in and C out are very what type of objects? Anybody remember it? Yes, I said they're very shy. I said if you do something wrong to them, they won't listen to you anymore. 
they're going to completely you enter more than 256 characters they're going to put 255 of them in, 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 in m content right it, it puts that one over there but it doesn't flush it which means the rest will remain in the keyboard and then it says i don't like you i'm not going to talk to you anymore which means the C in that gets the volume and the amount will not work for that. Okay? And we can always check. We can ask C in, hey, are you sad? Anything wrong? Did you fail? You can actually do that. You can say, hey, hey, C in. You can say, if C in dot fail, if C in fail, what do we do? No, I'm not going to flush anything. Uh, yeah, sure, flush, fine, but but forget about flush for now. Uh, what do we do? No, we can't because it's shy. So first, we have to apologize. I have to say, see in the clear. I know you're sad. I'm sorry, but clear all the bad feelings. Come back to me. And now I'm going to say to user, see out, really, 256 characters. Okay, do it again, okay? And I'm not gonna do it again. I'm just gonna say, get out of here because I don't wanna do a foolproof thing yet, okay? But in here, I'm gonna say else, which means if it does that, I'm not gonna put anything in. I'm just gonna fail and come out. Now, many applications don't clear it at all. So maybe it's a good idea, right? So if we do that, we can actually take advantage of it. So now, instead of 256, I'm going to put, what, say, uh, 6, just to make sure that I can fail it, OK? And I'm going to put over here 6, just to test it, OK? And I'm here, I'm going to say, too long. Uh, name too long, uh, content. Content name too long. Okay, and I'm not going to clear the. I'm not going to apologize to it. So what happens now in here after doing this? I can say if c in dot failed, not failed. If c in dot fail, not display. So I only display if C in didn't fail. If C in didn't fail, it means everything went well. Okay? Doing so I don't I don't even need to do that anymore over there. So in here, all I need to do, because C in fails and doesn't do anything, I can remove everything in here completely and just let it do its job. That's a good thing about C in. So that shy thing is good. So if it's say, I'm just gonna say over here, see how oh, not fail. In here, I'm gonna say else. Bad data. Go figure out what was wrong. Right? So I'm using that shy thing. I'm taking advantage of it. I'm going to tell, tell it to read. If anywhere over there, for any reason, the content is too long, you said put a volume instead of integer. They put, it, put characters over there. Scene's going to fail. So anything they do wrong. So now in here, if I run the program, first one, I'm going to actually pass through it. So in here, I'm going to say milk. So that's good. It's going to ask for the volume. I'm going to say 10. Whoop. You see? It prints all this stuff, but it's going to say bad data and won't display anything. It just skips everything. All the other scenes are going to go away. Or even in here, if I say, Milk and some other things. If I do that, again, the same thing. It's going to fail. So that thing, just think about it, what you want to do. Like, uh, sh sure, you can, you can have an if statement in, in front of every single one so you don't do the rest. It's all your choice. But know the idea that seeing fails if something goes wrong with it. If you want to correct it and do foolproofing, you can always clear and ask again and again and again and again. No problem with that, OK? So just keep that in mind, OK? So 
And <clears throat> another good thing that you can do with seeing that you don't need to say fail. You can, you can, instead of that, you can just say, if CN. So if you put CN as a condition, it's, it's a polymorphic object. You want to see how I am? I'm going to tell you if I'm good or not. It's a polymorphic thing. It's not a condition. CN is an object. But because it's a polymorphic object, when you ask what is your condition, you put CN as a condition. It returns true if it's good. It returns false if it's bad. OK, so that's what I can do. And you can do the exact same thing for the C out. So you can say, do the C outs messaging for the rest only if C in is OK. So in front of it, so you don't want these things to keep printing, right? You get the first one. And then when you are getting the second one in here, you say, when you want to show the other message, you say, if C in, show that message. If C in show that message, which means if the previous C in didn't fail, keep asking. Otherwise, don't do anything. Now it's going to actually look better. If I actually run the program now and somebody enters garbage, it's not going to ask for anything else. If I enter lots of stuff, it simply says bad data. The other ones are not displayed. And, and it's going to, and it's going to just do it when needed. So again, in here, if I say milk, and then I say over here, um, 10, and in here I say, uh, I don't know, 20, then it's going to still say bad data. So it stops where it's needed, and the program looks very nice and beautiful. So there you have two choices. Either you want to have full proof application, which means then you're going to write a loop in here and say, you can simply do something like this. You can say do. Do while C in dot fail. While C in is a failure mode, do this, right? And it keeps going like that. The problem is that you have to clear it at the beginning. Always apologize at the beginning. Clear. And then you have to, just clearing it won't be enough. You have to actually flush the keyboard. It's too complicated. I'm not going to go through it. And flushing the keyboard, you know what it is, right? You single character reading and stop. You know how it works. Yes. I just taught two seconds ago. I just taught two seconds ago that I have a container, and container has two methods. Are those two methods in library, or if they are in container? When I'm saying C in dot, if you have C in, when you come, does your head come with you, or it's in a library? That question was extremely C-based. You follow? That was, that's actually an interesting question. This was actually a good question. When an object has methods, methods come with an object. It's part of it. When I come with me, my nose come with me. It's part of me. My teaching ability comes with me. It's part of me. It's, I don't have to go borrow it from library. You follow what I'm saying? So think object-oriented. All right? Every capability. And C in has massive amount of stuff. So if I wanted to, like for example, to flush the keyboard right now, I can say C in dot ignore a thousand characters and stop at backslash n. There you go. That's your flush. There is ignore. Ignore means ignore so many characters and stop at something. Right? Nobody's going to enter 1,000 characters. Like if you worry, put 10,000. Right? So that's your flush. So in here, I'm saying, but, but you cannot put ignore just like that. Ignore should only happen if CN is at a failure mode. So in here, you have to say if CN 
dot fail. If I am in a fail mode, then first clear, then ignore. Because ignore is, if you just start with an ignore and nothing there, it waits for you to enter something and ignore it, <laughs> right? So I'm saying if seen has failed, I'm in a bad position, clear everything, and ignore all the characters, now start getting the line. Now it's going to keep, now this is a foolproof read now. This is a foolproof read inside the thing. And the beauty of it is that all you see is read. So I don't need to have all these display sh stuff. That's what is called encapsulation. The user doesn't see anything other than a read. But when the program runs, users enter some garbage. Oh, I forgot to print the message. Sorry. <clears throat> User prints some garbage. If seen, that fails. So while seen, seen amount. So in here, I have to say, if seen, that fail. And my apologies. Um, I don't know why I left that message up there. So in here, I'm going to say, if. and the fail that that's a C out I forgot okay run the program now it's kind of foolproof so in here if I put some garbage in here it's gonna say bad data content again now if I say over here milk and in here I put 10 it says bad data, goes back to content again. Now in here, I'm going to say milk. I'm going to say 10. I'm going to say ABC. Again, it's going to say bad data. Milk, 10, 20. Now it's going to actually read it. So writing a foolproof application with what we call methods. So these functions that they belong to a class, they are not called functions anymore. Do not call them functions. They are called methods. Remember, methods. Or if you want to give it, method is the object-oriented name, which means to any language you go, anywhere you go, you say method. They know you're talking about a function that is a member of a class. But C++ books call these things member functions. Object-oriented books call actions inside the class method therefore we call it a method here so what is a method is a member function got it so member functions and function can exist right so in here <clears throat> what I want to do in here to show you something is this uh, first of all let's make this thing make sense so in here I'm gonna make it 21 okay and I'm gonna make it 21 so if it's if it passes 21 I stop if it passes 20 I stop remember this 21 includes the null Okay? So you don't have to write 20 because, or 22 because you want to add one more, or 20 because it's, it's, it, 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 it knows what it reads. The, the null is included in that line, in that thing. So that's the size of the array including null. Anyways, so in here, <coughs> I can do this, like cnt.m amount is 50. Okay? Right? Now, if I run the program, what's going to happen? If I run the program in here, I'm going to say, oh, it's going to the other one. I wish they remember where the thing was. Anyways, so in here, I'm going to say, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say? What is it? I'm going to say again, milk, 10. And in here, I'm going to say 20. And it's going to say 50 out of 10 liters. What the devil? I just hacked my container. That's bad. You don't want to do that. You don't want anybody to be able to change the value of your container. Anything that can change the value of container should be the container itself. You should have something over here that actually sets the amount. So in here, you should have something like void set amount. And in that set amount, you get a value, whatever value is. You write over here void container set amount 
and you get the value. Now in here you say if the value is greater than m content, sorry, m uh, volume, then it has to overflow, right? So you're going to say value is set to m volume. So you can correct things. It's not a dumb set. It's an intelligent one. Now you can say m value, volume, is equal to the value you want to set it. So if somebody wants to set it to some stupid thing, in here they have to go set amount, dot, set amount, and they put 50 in here. But if you put more than what I have kept, what I have uh, there, you have to, uh, if, you, if, you, if you put more than what is the, uh, the volume, then I won't allow you. And you reuse your code inside your read. So in your read, when you're actually setting the amount, you're not going to set the amount just like that. In here, you will create a temporary value. You call it amount. You read the C in, in amount. And let's null it. Make it empty. And then you say set amount to amount. So what happens now, even if user enters some dumb value, you can correct it. Okay? So I did this. Now I can actually set the amount properly. No matter what I do over there, it's going to set it to the proper amount, which means if I say the content over here, the milk thingy that I had, and the volume for it is, say, uh, uh, 25 liters, and in here I say, uh, I don't know, 10, and it tries to set it to 50. Whoa, what did I do? Am I making a mistake? Out of 10 liters, why the volume is not set properly? Let me see, let me see. I did some uh, uh, mistake in here. Let me just check. Volume goes to volume. Where? 21? It is 0. That's 0. So let me see what did I do. Why, why it's giving me a... So I'm setting it like that. I'm setting the volume. And I'm sh asking what the amount is. It's going to see in the amount. Set the amount. It failed. Hmm. What happened wrong? Uh, set amount over here is setting. Oh, it's setting the volume. Shoot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I set the volume in the amount I was supposed to set. The what? Yeah. I made a boo boo. So, so back to this. So in here, contents, uh, I'm going to, again, milk, 10, uh, 20, and I'm going to put 10, and it's going to set it to 20, even if they are setting it to 50. But what is important over here to prevent idiots of doing this, because still, they can actually say CNT dot amount is 100. Nobody can guarantee that they're going to use that function. They can hack my class still. To prevent that comes the privacy. So you can actually go in your class and say, hey, these things are private. And these guys are public. Now if somebody tries to, first of all, what, 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 what? Yeah. So if somebody tries to write over here, CNT dot. First of all, the intelligent sense doesn't even show you the option because it only shows the public stuff. But if you want to insist and say, I'm going to say M, M amount set to 100, it's going to give, give you an error, say, hey, member container, yada, yada, declared is inaccessible. Don't touch it. You can't touch it. And that's privacy. 
So member functions and privacy. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Hmm? You can change it, but only the class itself can change it. All the methods can change it. It's, you know, I always give this example. Like I would say, I'm your teacher, right? If we go to Tim Hortons and want to get a coffee, I don't have my wallet. I'm going to say, oops, I forgot my wallet. Can I have a couple of dollars so I can buy a coffee? She would give it to me, hoping that I'm going to add some marks to the test, right? <laughs> so, 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 right? Or just be nice to your prof. But imagine, so 99.9999 if she has the two bucks, or if she doesn't, she's going to say, I get your coffee, don't worry, right? But imagine if I'm just in front of her, I go, open the zipper, put my hand in there, pick the two dollars. What happens? The outcome is that it works, right? <laughs> <laughs> it works. If we, she, she's not looking, I open it up and take the two dollars, it works. What did I do? I invaded the privacy. It prevents that. If you want something, you ask the class to give it to you. So class can keep track and correct mistakes if, boss, if, if they are made. You follow? Are we good now to this point? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So now, next thing I want to do over here, I crave so bad to jump to next week and cover the next week's thing too because it just comes so nicely after this. But uh, let me see, if it, actually, if it actually comes to a point that I see A goes after B, B goes after C, C goes after D, and I have time for E, then I'm going to tell you that, okay? So next week's going to be covered too. But let's see what happens, okay? <clears throat> so now, um, that, so I did a foolproof read over here. It's, that looks pretty cool and nice. Uh, and uh, again, it's not like C language. C language, you have one scanf that you have to put cryptic stuff inside a format string to get something properly. C++ says you have to write more line of code, but it makes sense. Any idiot looks at this, says, OK, start if C and failed. I have to clear it, ignore all the garbage. Now I get the content. So it tells you what's happening step by step. That's object oriented. You get, don't get confused. Every single action tells you this get line is from C in. If C in is successful, is good, it's true, I'm going to show the message. So every single line of code is a comment for itself. And that's the beauty of it. OK? Next, dynamic memory allocation. <clears throat> Instead of just getting the <clears throat> name like that, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do the 256 as my friend did over here. I'm going to say in here, character, what is the, oh, let me just put the non-dynamic over here first. So, what if I do this? And run it. This is what I'm going to get, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to. So it's a good idea to have some function written to set everything to some default value before we begin. Let's call it init, right? So in here, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say, I'm going to create a method void init. To initialize it. And, and, and also, something extremely important that I have to tell you. It not, let me just finish, let me finish this in it first. So, the, in, in it, I'm going to say, uh, first of all, I'm going to make the content zero. I don't want it, right? I don't want anything in it. So, I'm going to say m content zero is zero, and that makes it blank, right? Because it's C, I put the null termination at the beginning. It's a stop sign right at the beginning. Then I'm going to say M volume is equal to M amount, and they're all zero, right? So I just set everything to a, a safe. We call it, this is called a safe state. You're setting 
your object to a safe state, okay? Safe, empty state, they call it. You can recognize to see if your object is empty or not. And, and you can actually add a method to it and simply say, is empty. And your is empty function actually checks to see if it's empty, saying return, uh, not return, uh, let me write it. So is empty is, doesn't mean that the container is empty. It is, is safe empty. It is in a safe empty state. Or you can call it invalid. The object is invalid. And uh, the object is not set. Safe empty state is, is what we call. Okay, a safe empty state. So in the safe empty state, because its container is empty, people think that it is perfect container. It's a milk container, but it has no milk in it. <laughs> okay, I don't want that. So a safe empty state, it's a Boolean thing, and I'm going to the only way it could be really bad is that the volume is zero, right? So I'm going to return true if volume is zero. If volume is zero, it is in a safe empty state, or it's in an embedded state, right? And in the display function, what I can say over here, instead of just blindly printing everything, I'm going to say, if not is safe empty, print this stuff. Otherwise, I'm going to say, this container is not set, right? So now if I just blindly print this thing without doing anything, I'm not going to have a catastrophic garbage getting printed. I'm going to get a meaningful thing over there. Such a meaningful thing I got. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I didn't initialize it. That's why I didn't initialize it. I should remember to initialize. the object, and now if I actually print the object and I get it, it's going to say object, the container is not set. Okay? Are we good down to this point? Nice. Now, so this one is going to be a member functions and privacy, B, member and privacy dot CPP. And then after this is going to be a break. And we come back, we're going to add some more spicy stuff to it. Okay? Pause. Now, let's make this thing dynamic. I don't know what the length of the content is, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, I don't know what the length is. I'm going to make it a pointer. Now, in here, this content thingy that I've done, instead of making it zero, I'm going to make it null PTR. So when it's to safe empty, say it doesn't point anywhere. And is safe empty, I'm not going to do the volume thingy anymore. I'm going to say if M content is nothing, it is in a safe empty state. That's a much more sure thing to do. Okay? So that's that. Next, initialization is done. Uh, safe empty state is done. Set amount is okay. Display is okay. Read does not work. So if I want to actually get stuff and put it in there, it's a good idea to create a function for it. I can do it in, I can do it in read, and then I'm going to do it in function. I'm going to modularize it in a function. So to read the name, what I need is a buffer. So I'm going to get it for some size. So I'm going to say 256 that, as I mentioned, our friend said over here, character. So I'm going to say over here content, not M content, content, and I'm going to make it 256, right? Then in here, I'm going to get the line in the content, not M content, for 256 characters, right? Workshop 2. Workshop 2. What the devil is that? Workshop 2, I want. Workshop two, oh, not that workshop two. Workshops. 
Or chip two. Is it in here? Yes, I have the stuff I want from string header file in this utils thingy, so I don't have to include it. I'm gonna use the utils over here. So let me clone it. Clone the workshops. So workshops. Copy. Let me clone it in OP244 because this is not my development computer. It's just for teaching. So I'm going to go to 244 and clone it. Git clone. Okay. And done. And now I'm going to take those utils and I'm going to use it in here. So I'm going to go to workshop 2, lab, and I'm going to copy utils.cpp utils.h. Copy. Now I'm going to come over here in this one. I'm going to say open file explorer and bring it over here and paste to those two things over here. Paste. Now I have utils. Let me add it to this project so I don't have to include uh, a string header file. Uh, so I right click over here. I'm going to say add existing item and it's going to be these two and it's gonna automatically put it in proper place. So utils do this. It does a string length, string copy, and string compare. The string copy, if I don't mention how long, it's gonna go right after the thing. If I do mention how long, that's gonna be the case, and string compare compares, which I don't need. I need the string length and string copy, and I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna come in this thing here and, here, and I'm gonna say, so now I, I, I get that one in 256. So if the thing doesn't fail, so th the failure thing, if, uh, if C in doesn't fail, it's going to show content volume, right? If it doesn't fail. I'm going to take that opportunity and I'm going to say if C in didn't fail, it means, it means I have a valid value inside content, correct? Is that right? Are we okay with that? Right? So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to say m content is equal to new character str len of content that I just read plus one for null termination. And then I'm going to say, uh, oh, I forgot to add the thing. So in here, I'm going to say uh, um, two things I need to do. Number one, uh, I need to say include. No, I just did utils for that. What's C string? Utils.h. And also, I, re I forgot that everything I am doing is supposed to be done in namespace stds. So come all the way down. Not the main, just the thing. OK? And in here, I know it's stupid, but I namespace stds. OK? I know it's stupid, but let's assume that this is in another module. Okay, this container. You can always modularize it yourself later on. Okay, so now I am in read. Now in this read thing, yeah, I wish I could kind of make these things go away. The real estate over here is very small. Uh, can you see back there or it's not visible? Let me see if I can turn this thing off. I don't know. Or lower the light a little. Yes. Okay, that's better. I'm sorry, because I want to, can you see it back there? Is it visible? Okay. So now in here, I'm going to say, uh, allocate enough memory for SDRLEN over there, the content thingy that we have. And then after doing that, do, uh, could you please close that door if you don't mind? Just pull that thing away so the door gets closed. Now I'm going to say SDR copy into M content. into M content, the value of content. Okay? So I allocate exactly the amount that I wanted. The only problem is that I did a foolproofing thingy over here, right? Which means every time that I'm coming in here at the end, if it fails, I'm going to come back and do another mem dynamic memory allocation. So it's going to, if, if the mistake is in C in over here or amount and things like that, 
then I'll be in trouble, right? So what I need to do, I, because I have to, because I have followed the rule of initializing the content to null when I don't want it, I can freely every single time say, delete m content. If I'm reading, if there is anything in there, should get wiped out before I can read anything into it. So if it's nothing, delete won't do anything. But if something was there, first it's going to remove it, then allocate new one. Therefore, I don't have dynamic memory allocation, any allo uh, memory allocation uh, failure. And obsessively, I do, we don't need it, but obsessively do this. Every time you have an unused pointer, set it to null. Because if everything fails and you don't want to come back in, something like that, whatever happens for any reason. Um, so this foolproof thing won't let you out until you enter a container. That's not a good thing. You should be able to actually add something and say, would you like to save this or you want to get out? Like maybe you don't want to enter the container, you want to get out of this program. Okay, if that's the case, we don't want it to uh, cause trouble. But anyways, so we come in, it deletes the content first because it wants to read over it. Then if CN is failed, it's going to ignore and do all the good stuff. Then it says content. If the read inside that local variable, local uh, memory is done successfully, CN is successful, it's going to allocate to the size of what it read, copy the value, therefore I have the content. If it comes over here and CN fails, comes back up, it deletes the old one first. And if it fails right over here, then that is not overwritten, so we are good. It remains null. So now the dynamic thing is working. But there is one problem with this too. What is that problem? When program ends, I will have memory leak. Because I made the content con dynamic, right? I have to re uh, wipe it out. So I have to clean up after I'm done. So I need to actually have something to finalize my, uh, the existence of my object. So I had the initialization. I have to have a finalized one or clean up. OK? And this cleanup of mine should actually get rid of any memory that I created. So this cleanup of mine, where did it put it? There you go. So this cleanup of mine should, set. there you go. So uh, where was I? Yeah, delete. I should delete mcontent and mcontent again. For now, we don't know when we need it or when we don't. So that cleanup is going to clean up the thing. So we have to make sure that at the end, we say cnt dot cleanup. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we not only have a container who tracks all the things that we want, but also this thing can uh, hold the values dynamically. So if you have many containers with different names, you've got to have exactly the amount of memory that you need and not one byte more. And we can add many different things over here. For example, <clears throat> what if I want to, what, the, what is this? Diff. How did I do diff? It does diff? Cool. I clicked on something and diff came, diff came up. Anybody see what I clicked? Nice. If that's the case, it would be amazing. Nice. Anyways. Anyway, so I clicked somewhere, diff came up. I don't know. Is it this one? Yes. Okay, good. Now I know. Something new. So we know what is different. Oh yeah, but the, the, uh, uh, the Git that is the Git uh, tools that are um, uh, kind of added to tools, they don't work properly usually most of the time. I haven't tried this one. If everything works proper with the Git thingy in this one, then sure, I'll let you guys know. And next thing that I'm going, next uh, video that I'm going to create, no tortoise git, and you can use this one instead. But the good thing about tortoise git is that it works for anything. You can do your, I don't know, any subject on, on git and, and hold it and have it versionized, right? 
like essays that you're writing for your English. That's a beautiful thing. You put it over there every time you develop, then you know if something goes wrong, you can always go back and fix it. Anyways, so, so now I have the finalized and initialization, and also you can add stuff like set names, set this, set that. You can set values to, to things properly. So if uh, somebody wants to set the container to certain values, you can add methods to do that. As I add that as a challenge, we can do it later. Uh, we can do it. Uh, uh, should I do it here now? A set function. Yeah, I'm going to write this. So, so first, let's keep it like this. So in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, C uh, DMA D DMA container uh, CPP. So that's that's the dynamic version version of the container. And uh, did we run it at all? Let's see if it actually works. I compiled and I put it over there. I don't know if it works or not. Uh, oh, it says container is not set right off the bat. Um, I didn't read anything. Let me just put over here. And I don't need set amount. I just want to read and display. And you have to run it with Valgrind to see on, on Matrix to see if everything's OK. Uh, um, What should I say? Um, one percent skimmed milk, something like this, and I hit enter. A container volume is twenty liter, and in here I'm going to say one skim milk, so it's actually reading it properly. I'm going to put ten over here. Uh, one skim milk, ten out of twenty liters. Okay, so uh, ten of twenty liters, uh, so ten or ten liters in a twenty liter container. We can. Set it to however you want. Uh, so that's that. Uh, so we can actually write set function to actually set the values to whatever we have. So in here, I'm going to say, oh, 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 before doing anything, something that I wanted to mention. <clears throat> this private and public is to make sure outsiders, when I say outsiders, anyone, any program, any application that is using the class not to manipulate the data without the methods of the class. That's what they are for. Are we okay with that? But who protects you from you? When you are displaying something, should you change the content of the container? You're displaying it, right? Like. If I am teaching you C++, my knowledge of C++ should not get reduced. I should not do that, right? If you are displaying something by nature, you should, or if you are checking to see if it is an empty state, should I change the container? No. So you have to remind yourself on that and not let it happen. Obvi and also, if somebody wants to actually write a function to display your container for whatever reason. Okay, so I'm going to say void over here, display container with a row. Okay, so I want to have a row, so integer row. And in here, I'm going to say const because, because I don't want to change it. I want to display it, right? Container reference C. So in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to show some C out. I'm going to say over here row, and I'm going to show a column, and I want to show C, right? So in here, I'm going to say C dot, C dot, nothing comes up. Why? Because C is a constant, it will not allow you to, to use any function that you did not force that function not to change its owner. You have to mention what are you doing in here. Is safe empty state? It's just telling you the status of the class. It's not supposed to change it. Therefore, you have to say this is not changing the object. The const after the name indicates that if by mistake in here I say m amount is set to zero, 
it won't allow me to do so. It's going to tell me, hey, what are you doing? Expression must be a modifiable value. This is a constant method. You are only allowed to access it. These things, we call them queries. This is a query. So you have queries and you have modifiers. This is a modifier. This is a modifier. It's changing the state of your class. It's changing the attributes of your class. Set amount is changing. Display is not supposed to. So you have to make it a constant. And you have to make it a constant. Which means I'm not changing anything. I'm just displaying the object. Read is a modifier. We should not. Ch we should not let. We should. We should let it be. Now in here, if I say C dot, I can actually display it because display is a constant one. Now if I do this, I can actually display it. Then then I want to go to new line afterwards, for example, right? So I have to do a C out in here and out. We can actually fix that because. Because uh, what is the type of C out? Anybody knows? Everything is an object in C++. Like everything, literally. <laughs> OK, so what is, do you know what is the type of C out? What, like we say, if I told you over here, what is the type of C and T, you would tell me it's a container, correct? And C out is an object, right? What is the type of it? No, it's called O stream. Oh, the library. Yes, it's not the library. It's the class. Yeah, I didn't say I O stream. I said O stream. Okay. It's a class. C in is an instance of I stream. Okay. So what what I can do over here is this. Take a look. In here, I can say display. In here, I'm going to say O stream reference. Return an O stream reference to display. Remember, I told you about weird stuff? It's the same thing. In here, I'm going to say return O stream reference. And at the end of display, I'm going to say return C out. So, what happens if I do this? Display becomes a new name for C out, right? Correct? So in here, instead of writing in, in this function, instead of writing C out and L afterwards, I can do this. Display and then go to new line. Why? Because display becomes a new name for C out, correct? Makes your program cool and nice. You don't have to write an extra line, right? So these are nice stuff that we can do. And I'm going to end the class. I'm going to end the class by teaching what we are supposed to teach next week. It is impossible for us to remember. So I'm going to say, so this is DMA. So I didn't do setting, did I? Setting, I didn't do. I'm not going to do set. Mm, yeah. You want me to write a set to set everything, a function that sets? Let's write it. So in here, I'm going to say set. OK? And in this set thingy, I'm going to pass an integer, uh, a character constant, sorry, character pointer m content. Uh, it's not m content, content. And then I'm going to pass integer volume and integer amount, OK? Uh, I'm going to actually put the amount first and then the volume. And then the volume. And we can say if they didn't mention what the volume is, it's 220 liters, standard barrel size, <laughs> OK? Something like that. Now we want to write the set function. So what do we do to write the set function? This is how it happens. So to write the set function, <coughs> I'm going to do exactly what I did in the read. So in here, I'm going to say, <coughs> I'm going to say what? I'm going to say, um, so I'm going to have a content like that. 
because I want to set it, right? Then I want, I'm going to have over here the exact same thing I have over here, as you see. So in here, I'm going to say, if you want to set the content, first mconst delete the m content. And then see what is the link that is coming in and copy it that way. So dynamically sets it. And then in here, I'm going to say, if uh, volume is less than, uh, let's, let's say if amount is greater than volume, then amount becomes volume to do the correction the way I want it to be, right? Then I'm going to say what? I'm going to say uh, uh, m amount will be set to amount. m volume becomes volume. And it's set, OK? Are we OK with this? So now that I have written this, now that I have written this, I can rewrite my read. So instead of having separate things over here, what I can do in here, instead of setting everything in my class, what I can do is actually saying uh, int uh, volume over here. So I'm going to create a volume too. And read everything in temporary value. So in here, <clears throat> I'm not going to read the volume. I'm going to read. I'm not going to. Where is it? Uh, well, I'm not going to read it in volume. I'm going to read it in volume, and in here I'm going to read it in amount that is reading it, and set amount is not needed anymore. So I'm going to read it in volume amount, and in here it's going to say bad data, right? And if it's not bad data, I do not need dynamic memory allocation over here anymore. <clears throat> deleting, I do need. Uh, deleting, I don't even need. And in here, I'm going to say otherwise set to content concept content. Uh, amount and volume. There you go. Okay. So now because my set automatically <clears throat> wipes out the already existing stuff, allocates and does all the good stuff that it's supposed to, I don't need to worry about it over here. I'm going to get everything in the temporary values. If everything is good, I'm going to set the content. If it's not, it's going to go back and redo it over and over and over. So it's going to get it. If everything is good, I'm going to set my values. Now it's more modular and nice. Are we OK with this? So I don't have to write an extra line. I don't have to write C out and L on the bottom. Because display is returning C out, I'm going to just use that one to print. Oh. OK. <laughs> it, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it returns the C out. It returns the reference of the C out. So display becomes a new name for C out. You can use it as if you are using C out. Makes your life easier. You'll see that that's going to be a standard thing in future. We have one minute. Should I teach the next semester, next week in one minute? I'll do it. Now, it is impossible for me to remember that I am supposed to initialize and clean up at the end, right? There are two procedures. They are not functions. They are not methods. OK? Did I attract your attention? OK. So remember that. These are not functions. These are procedures you can put inside a class to force them to run anytime a frat class, any anytime an object is born, and anytime that the object dies. The name of these procedures are the same as the name of the class. Container, 
and the other one is a tilde container. They call the first one a constructor, the second one a destructor. So when you implement these, all you need to do, so when you implement these and implement this one, when you implement these two things, all you need to do in the constructor, you initialize, and in the destructor, you clean up. Did I put clean up? Did I have a clean up? Clear? What did I do? Oh, clean. Okay, clear up. Okay. I'm going to put clear up. Okay? And those two functions, they don't even need to be accessible. We can make it private because no one else has to use them. Now, in here, I do not need to initialize anything. I do not need to clean up anything because when the object is born, that procedure is called. When the object is dying, that procedure is called. Okay? Constructors are called when the objects are born. Destructors are called when the objects die. They are not functions. You cannot call them. Do you understand this? You see, they didn't have a return type. Are we okay with this? Next time, we're going to talk about them. Have a beautiful day. Yes. I'm going to I'm going to make sure everything runs properly, clean it up and post the notes tonight. Actually, I'm going to run it right now with bug because I don't I didn't test it to see if it runs or not. If it's a pro if there is problem, fix it, but I will fix it and push the changes. If there is any mistake, I'll push the changes. So they may be buggy. Remember that. They may be buggy.